I have a new head tracker and I'm actually pretty excited about that one because it's a really good one. So if you're into immersive audio and you're using head tracking in order to monitor immersive audio with headphones, you definitely don't want to miss this video because I'm going to show you how to use the head tracker and most importantly, where to get it from. But before I do that, first of all, hello everybody. My name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. If any of those topics are of interest, to you please consider subscribing and don't forget to press the like button because of youtube algorithms if you have any questions or comments please use the comment section below or join my discord community there's an invite link in the description below and you're more than welcome to join in now with that being said let's have a look at this new head tracker the head tracker that I'm talking about has been developed by a small British company called Supperware and I'm going to leave a link to the web store in the description below I believe it's a one-person company, but I might be wrong. In any case, the head tracker itself has a rather unusual design. It looks a little bit like a zip tie. It's obviously not a zip tie, it is a head tracker. But we will see that this design has a very big advantage that other head trackers don't have. It will allow us to create a completely stealthy look. So we're not going to have this little kind of weird thing on top of our headphones. Uh, it will be fully integrated into the headphone and therefore look much, much nicer. Um, the head tracker itself is not particularly expensive. Uh, I also have to say that it shipped very, very quickly. So when I, when I ordered it, I got it within a week, which was also nice. And uh, I should finally also mention that this head tracker has been around for a bit, but for some reason it flew under my radar and I was not aware of it. I just recently became aware of it. And that's really a shame because this is a really nice head tracker. So my hope is that with this video, more people will become aware of this really, really great head tracker. So here it is. And the thing about this head tracker is that all the individual components are, are sort of integrated in this little strip. And the idea is that you put that strip over your headphone. And uh, if you have a particular headphone that allows you to take off the padding of the headband, you can actually fully integrate that into your headphone so that it is not even visible at all. Uh, now I'm going to do that with uh, a pair of headphones that I have not used for a while. These are the uh, Biodynamic DT990 Pros. And these have such a headband that has a padding that you can take off. So uh, in order to use it, the first thing that you need to do is you need to put that on top of your headphones. And uh, if, uh, if you have a headphone that has like a padding like that, you just kind of put it in here. And uh, let me just wiggle that in into place. And uh, ooh, here we are. And then essentially you just clip it back and that's it. And now we have a headphone with integrated head tracker. Ah, okay, here we are. With integrated head tracker. And that's actually really nice and really stealthy. Now, um, the next thing I need to do is I need to connect it to my computer. This is uh, done through a USB connection. Now, when you purchase the head tracker, it comes with all the individual components. And by the way, if you if you don't have a headphone that allows you to uh, put the head tracker inside the headband, there are also some additional clips that come with the head tracker that allow you to clip it onto your into your headphone. So uh, so let's let's plug it into our PC and then let's download the software that we need to to use in order to use the head tracker. Now, this is the case with all of these head trackers. There's a little application that we need that turns the signal that comes out of the head tracker into something that our digital audio workstation or our plugin can understand. And in case of the Subaware head tracker, this uh, application is called Bridgehead. You can download that from the Subaware website. It exists for Windows as well as for Mac systems. And as soon as you open that, you should see the connection established. Uh, I can see that here by essentially the dummy head moving. If I want to center the dummy head, I just double click it. Now, uh, I do need to point out one uh, quirk or bug, or I'm not completely sure. If I open Ableton first and then the Bridgehead application, then I cannot establish a connection no matter what I do. However, if I open Bridgehead first and Ableton then, it works without without any issues. So I'm not quite sure if uh, where the problem here is, but it, it's sort of a weird behavior. Anyway, uh, it, it works perfectly fine. So as soon as you uh, open up the Bridgehead application, you should see the dummy head moving. Uh, that means that the head tracker has connected. Now there are a couple of settings 
settings that we can uh, essentially set here. Uh, first of all, we have the head tracker settings. And the one thing that we need to do is we need to tell the system uh, on which side we have the cable connected. Now, in my particular case, I have it on the left. Uh, so that, that is sort of the generality, uh, the cable on the left. If you have it on the other side, you just click on, on the right and that kind of changes it. Uh, you can uh, calibrate the head tracker. Now, in my particular case, and I believe this is because the uh, microphone is here very, very close. I'm not really getting particularly good data, but usually in this environment here, I'm getting uh, uh, excellent, uh, essentially, compass data. Um, but if you have any issues, you can calibrate. And there are also some uh, tutorials that uh, Superware put online where you see how to actually do some more uh, advanced calibration tasks. Now, the second thing is we need to set the up settings. And there are a couple of things that we can do here. First of all, we can uh, tell the system whether or not the connection should be established automatically as soon as I launch that application or if I use a tick button. So if I click here, I have this little tick button and that allows me to connect and uh, deconnect the uh, the head tracker. And the second thing, and that's actually a really neat thing, is we uh, we can tell the system how to uh, or what to do when we minimize or when we close the application. Do we want that application to continue to run, just minimized in the system tray, or do we want to quit completely? And what this allows us to do, it allows us to keep the bridgehead application running uh, even if the uh, window is closed. And if you remember in most of the other little applications that we used for all the other head trackers, we had to keep that window open in order for that to actually work. This is not the case here. We can simply click it away. It will go into the system tray and it will continue to monitor the head tracker and uh, provide tracking data for our digital audio workstation. Now, the final thing I, I want to kind of point out is are the bridge settings. We're going to go into those as soon as we start up uh, Ableton for Life and the Envelope for Life system. And that is uh, the profile settings uh, that, tell the, that tells the system how the bridgehead application is going to communicate with the uh, digital audio workstation and or the plugins that we're going to use. And there are a couple of profiles ready to go. You can use it for the Sparta you can use it for Ambihead. There's a profile for the IEM scene rotator and one for Facebook. Uh, but you can also uh, establish new profiles. Uh, so essentially these profiles are just stored in a text file and you can create your own one in case, in case you need something that, uh, that sort of is not covered here. Now this head tracker works with a couple of different applications, but for this video, I'm going to use Ableton and Envelope for Life together with the uh, custom made head tracking master bus uh, device that I showed in a previous video. Uh, once again, link in the description below. And uh, for that, uh, let's open up Ableton. Now for this video, I'm going to use a very simple example. And what I essentially did is I just kind of opened a, an empty session and then dropped a, an instrument on one of the MIDI tracks and uh, a MIDI clip on, uh, on one of the slots here. So let's just have a listen on how that sounds. And all we're really going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to spatialize that through the Envelope for Life system. So, so how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we need to go into wherever we have Envelope for Life stored. In my case, this is under the user library. And uh, let's take the source panner. The source panner, once again, is going to be responsible for panning that signal in three-dimensional space and turning the stereo signal into a third-order ambisonic signal. And let's drop that onto our MIDI track um, and that will essentially then take the stereo and turn that into 16 channel third order ambisonics and then we need on the other side a decoder that takes the 16 channel ambisonics and turns that back into something that we can uh, hear that we can listen and then we can work with and this is usually done by using the envelope for life master bus however we are going to use the customized device that comes with head tracking uh, if you have not downloaded that yet i'm going to leave a link to that in the description below and uh, let's drop that onto our master bus and as soon as we do that it will connect with the uh, source panner and uh, essentially kind of turn that um, signal or, or kind of turn that that's ambisonic signal back into something that we can listen to. Now, I'm going to leave everything alone here. So I'm going to use the binaural YouTube um, method, which essentially means it's, it's a, a first order 
ambisonics uh, signal that that's going to be used to decode you can change it to third order ambisonics or to do to the 2d if you want to uh, you might also notice that if you watch the video about this particular device um, one of my previous videos and i'm going to leave a link in the description below as well uh, then uh, there are some additional options now and that is because this is actually an updated device and what noah has implemented is he has uh, now a possibility or has added a possibility to use internal routing within ableton so if you want the um, the output of the decoder not routed to your output channels but rather to something that you can continue to work with you can now do that so for example if i want to have the first two, two channels of the ambisonic signal or whatever is going to be passed on through the decoder and and kind of route that to one of the other audio or group tracks on ableton i can now do that i'm going to leave everything alone here because i'm just going to uh, use the monitoring uh, option here and the final thing is that we need to do we need to set the head tracking information to be bridge head so, so we're going to do that now you might notice that when you do that you see a dummy head here in my case i don't see a dummy head and the reason for that is because of the way i use my monitor this is a 4k monitor that i'm using and when i do these videos i scale it up 200 percent and windows is not particularly nice to images when you do some sort of scaling um i've worked with the developer to try to figure out how to how to solve that we have not yet come up with a solution so in, in any case uh if you if you don't apply by scaling or if you're on a on a mac you should see a dummy head here i don't uh, nevertheless, I still see that the whole thing is working because I can now see down here in the your pitch and roll that the uh, tracking information is actually coming through. So let me just uh, uh, center my, my position. So I'm going to just look straight forward and then click on the center button to center my, my position so that everything is, is uh, calculated correctly. There's one final thing that I'm going to do and that is in the actual source panel, I'm going to switch from stereo to mono. And the reason I'm going to do that is to make everything a little bit easier to hear where the sound actually is now um that should actually now work um and uh, but there is a little bit of a bug in there and uh, and for some reason um i'm not quite sure where that comes from but uh, when you kind of set it up like that the first thing you will notice is that some of the directions are wrong so uh, let me just show you what i mean by that so for the so first first of all let's just play what we have so far and let me just let me just kind of give you a little bit more game to that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, so the, the the signal now is right in front of me. However, if I if it, that means that it's essentially if I turn my head to the right, you should actually hear that because you're hearing exactly what I'm hearing on my headphones. So if I turn my head to the right, you should actually hear that on my on my left uh, on the left on the left side. However, if I do that, you actually hear that the signal is in the back. So, so this is actually wrong. So it's, it's reversed. So what's what's shown here in the front, uh, the tracker actually kind of, uh, or the, the 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 device essentially kind of shows it on the uh, on the back. So let's just check what all the other directions are. Uh, so let me just first kind of see the uh, right left. So that. That seems to work. So left, right, left, right is okay. And uh, and then let's just check what's what's going on with uh, up down. And for that, I'm going to switch to the uh, X Y Z mode because it's easier to kind of go the up down. So let, let me just. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to turn my head like that. So essentially, this means if if I if I'm turning my head like that and if I'm moving the C into positive direction, you should hear that on the right side. And that seems to work as well. So uh, essentially, what we have is we have uh, we have the front and the back reversed. And fortunately for that, the um, uh, envelope for life uh, master device that uh, that um, essentially Noah implemented has this little button here that kind of reverses from front back to essentially kind of reverses front and back. Uh, so if we click on that, we essentially change from what was in the front to what is in the back. And so let's let's go back and see if that's now sounding correctly. So once again, this should be now in the front. Yeah, and this is now in the front.
earth glide and up down and now for some particular reason we have it uh, up and down reversed right but that's not a big deal how do we fix that well uh, essentially that's actually fairly easy to fix all we really need to do is we need to tell the the uh the bridget device that the uh that essentially the the where, where the where the cable connects to the tracker is actually on the other side. So uh, we currently have it on the left. Now, if we switch that to cable on the right, we will actually kind of change up down. So let's let's try that again. So I changed essentially from cable on the left to cable on the right. So you can see the dummy head is not moving incorrectly, but that actually will fix our little problem here. And uh, so once again, let's 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 give it another try. So let's first switch that to polar, and let's play. Left, left, right is okay. And let's see if front back is still working correctly. Eh. That is working correctly as well. So let's let's see if up down is working correctly. Let's go back into XYZ mode because that makes it a little easier. So if I'm once again, if I'm going up, I should hear it. You should hear it on the on the right. And. That is correct. So it's now it's now doing everything correctly. Now um, I'm honestly not completely sure where the problem is. My assumption is that there's some uh, something in the math incorrect in uh, in Noah's uh, envelope for life custom device. But uh, it is a bug in the system. So uh, in all likelihood, when you watch that video, uh, Noah has already fixed it. So when you download it, uh, it should work. Everything should work exactly the way it's supposed to be. However, if you run into the same issue that I just ran in, you know how to fix that. So essentially, we, we need to change the reverse uh, on the Ableton for Life um, custom master bus, on the Envelope for Life custom master device. And we need to switch the generality from uh, cable on the left to cable on the right. And that essentially switches things around enough so that we have everything in the right order. Now, um, what is my final verdict on this particular track? Now with the little quirk that I just ran through, uh, kind of having the, the, the orientation incorrect. Uh, it is actually a really, really nice uh, head tracker. And there, and there are really a couple of reasons for that. The first one is that it is completely stealthy. So <laughs> I, I'm not looking like a nerdy little person that has this little tracker on top of the headphones. So it, it looks really, really kind of nice. And the second thing is that it is surprisingly stable. So, so you might uh, remember that in one of the previous videos I said that many of the trackers have a drift so if you if you wear them for a long time or even not even a long time actually kind of sometimes it just drifts away it will actually change the direction slightly and drift away and this one does not do that as much as many of the other trackers this is actually a re really really stable and accurate tracker uh, and uh, it's quickly becoming my favorite tracker it's a really really nice one so this is really everything I wanted to say today if you found that interesting once again please consider subscribing if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below or uh, join my Discord community. Link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.